So I've come out to Benfleet along the Thames Estuary and I'm going to basically walk along the estuary in the direction of South End. I don't know uh, whether I'll make it all the way there, maybe even carry on to Shoebury Ness. I have no map, which is never a good sign. You usually get a day in February where you start to feel the change happening. Maybe today's the day, it's the middle of February. Beautiful sunshine, it was actually quite warm back in Leightonstone. I just had a, a pang really to do this walk. I've had it for a while, it's been on my list. So with a bit of sunshine in the air, today feels like the perfect day. Yeah, this is what I was looking for today. Wide open skies, peace and quiet. Sometimes it's just the urge to get out of uh, to get out of London. This is really therapeutic. And of course, I wish I had uh, refreshed my memory of Rachel Lichtenstein's wonderful book *Estuary*, about this very territory. It's the essential book if you want to know about the Thames Estuary. Clues in the title. <laughs> so, uh, if this is a bit light on information today, highly recommend that book. So, up there on the hill, over there, that must be the ruins of Hadley Castle. I love the shape of the land here, I love the way it kind of curves down towards the marshy ground on the left and the way the, uh, the river bank bends the other way with the Benfleet Creek. Sometimes I find what I want is a horizon. It's a big, broad horizon. And I've certainly found a big, broad horizon here. It's a two tree island over there. Can't work out if there are, I mean, there are definitely more than two trees there now, aren't they? Some of those are shrubs, but I think, uh, I think the names become misleading. This is the same ecosystem as London. It's the big bad city. It all thrives from the river that feeds all of this and generates all of this. It's incredible landscape. It's an extension, really, or London. I mean, London is an extension of this. London grows out of this. It's an incredible thought, isn't it? So that's three and a quarter miles. I've just come from Benfleet, and now I've got, what, half a mile to Leon Sea. Which, of course, makes you think of the Carter Unstoppable Sex Machine song, Sheriff sure, Fat Man. This line about uh, the master busher of Leon C. I'm sure some of you have a certain vintage, you'll remember that. The rest of you will be wondering what the hell I'm talking about. You can really feel we're moving nearer the sea now. Of course, Leon C. It's just around the corner here. Although, I kind of feel it should be Leon Thames, right? This is still the Thames Estuary, actually beyond South End way out to what we might think of as the sea. My understanding is the estuary ends beyond the, the most distant headlands, which takes it quite a bit beyond South End. Maybe I'm just being pedantic though. Excellent cockle merchants. Wonderful. I used to love cockles when I was a kid. This is where you still see the, the Thames working. Seafood merchants here. Fishermen. It's great. It's really popular down here, even on a, a breezy February day. Temperature's dropped a bit now, but the pubs are packed. Everyone's eating ice creams and fish and chips. 
I'm sure many of you will have seen the film Dunkirk. It was released recently. A lot of the boats that went over to Dunkirk, the little fishing boats, came from here, came from along the Thames Estuary here around Leon Sea, South End. Some of them are still around, I believe. It's a really quaint little place, isn't it, Leon Sea? Been here once before, but that was about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Right on our doorstep. Oh my god, a sandy beach. Only about 10 yards of it, but even so, I'm not complaining. They say the Thames is a really difficult river to navigate and uh, it's full of shipwrecks apparently. Some really quite big ones out here. Heading into the estuary, our skipper nervously manoeuvres the 80 foot long Dutch barge into deeper channels, away from a light boy bobbing around in the water, marking the site of a treacherous sandbank called the Nore off the Isle of Sheppey. In 1944, a Liberty ship loaded with bombs and explosives ran aground there and sank in a storm later that night. The hazardous wreck, still filled with tons of munitions, remains buried in the mud. Looking through my binoculars, I search for the tip of the mast, which can sometimes be seen at low tide. So that stone obelisk you can see out there, it's called the Crow Stone and uh, it marks the end of the uh, Port of London Authority's jurisdiction. I often feel when I'm looking east from London you know, when I'm maybe at the Green Man Roundabout at Leighton Stone or on a hill somewhere near the edge of Epping Forest and I look eastwards, I feel like I'm being called out here out to the uh, eastern limit of London which is what I see this as, the end of the Thames where the Thames meets the sea Chalkwell Bowls Club this thatch roof two layers of quaintness. And this is the Western Esplanade at Westcliff-on-Sea. Great little row of cafes here at uh, Westcliff. Dino's Caf, Ross's Ice Cream, Sea Breeze, the Riviera Caf. And here you have your a very traditional seafront ice cream and possibly chip joint. I've resisted chips so far. I don't know how much longer I can hold out for. Palm trees. Oh my god, the Essex Riviera. And it's come out nice and sunny and warm again. It actually feels like the Riviera in the middle of winter. through these little fledglings here, waiting by the water's edge. And there they're off. So that is the legendary South End Cliffs Pavilion. It's a venue with some real heritage. I, I need, a, need a bit of a break from the esplanade. So I'm going to climb up through these lovely gardens here. Get a nice view from uh, high up. It's a gorgeous day. This was a great decision to come out here. Queen of 
Victoria surveying the estuary probably rolling her eyes in disapproval oh, the classic cliff lift I kind of feel like I should go on it just because it's there if it works that is the Navy and Military Club 1920 it's like the kind of place of old pulp novelists go to die. Oh, the fun of the fair. I tried to get my uh, youngest son to come with me today. And if he had done, we wouldn't have got past here. <laughs> We'd have been down there for hours. This would look a lot better at night. This is what you want at the seaside. Sunspot amusements. It's a lovely old Art Deco building, is it? Called the Olympia. I mean, they may have amazing surf beaches in Australia, but they don't have anything like this. Neptune's looks good. Shem already eaten. Otherwise, I'd have got in there. Now, the Kersal. That is a genuine architectural gem. Some people would say it was worth walking all this way just to see that building alone. I've reached a point now where I'm walking out of habit. I'm not entirely sure. I'll make it to Shubriness, but I don't want to stop either. It's so amazing to be by the sea. Well, I've been looking for signs of spring. And uh, I think I may have found them down here. By the, at the end of the Thames Estuary, the south end. Although I would say, it's bloody freezing again now. <laughs> There's, something's changed in the air. And this walk... It's felt like a holiday. It's been incredibly restorative and therapeutic. I'm just going to keep going now until I can't go any further. Mm.